Hello, for this demo, I'm going to show you uh, or demonstrate Canary deployments with uh, Istio. So I'm in the process of starting up the application here. It, as you saw from the previous video, I had just to make a, uh, that minor tweak to the token server's IP address. But one of the things that you can do with Istio, which is really nice, is the uh, Canary deployments. And um, for this example, it's, it's, it's a fairly simple example, but it's going to demonstrate the uh, Canary deployments, um, at least what you can do there. So before I actually demonstrate that, I need to start up this particular YAML file. I need to apply it actually into the cluster itself. Uh, so I'm going to say Istio Canary, OK. Um, have to run that. I decided to run that mutually exclusive to the dark uh, releases, although you can run them together. So, oh, that is another good example right here. I started up the whole cluster, and basically by starting up the whole cluster, I had applied rules, which are in these particular rules right here, um, is for the ingress controller, as well as it creates these um, destination and virtual uh, it can, can creates these virtual services and destination rules. I'm not actually saying that right. But what I was trying to do is I was actually trying to apply this particular uh, set of virtual services right here uh, to demonstrate um, the Canary deployment, which I'm going to actually, I would like to actually go through this a little bit. But here it's just saying that these, uh, the virtual services and destination rules had already been created. And, um, you know, they had been created by other means when I started up the cluster. So this is a good segue into demonstrating how we can use Kiali to delete these before we apply a new set of rules here. So without further ado, I am going to start up Kiali. And let me see what I need to do right here. So I am bringing this in right here, and my new IP address this time when I started up the cluster is 26. And with Kiali, here's your initial login screen. And out of the box, you get the admin console. You can change your passwords and stuff like that. So lo and behold, I just logged in. This is kind of a good, good way to kind of demonstrate what we've got going on right here into the cluster. So you've got graphs, applications. For the graphing, I want to select a namespace. I could, here's another interesting thing. I could choose one or the other. Now the application's installed in default. I'm kind of sidetracking myself a little bit, but it's good to show this anyways. Two namespaces, we've got our Istio system and our default. And if you recall, um, let me just kind of show you what's going on here. So I started up my cluster right here. If I say get service minus n for Istio system, uh, you know, these are the different services that exist inside of our Istio system namespace. As you can see, we've got Citadel, which was for the TLS certificates. We've got the galley again um, for the YAML conversions. We've got our Ingress gateway, our sidecar injector for the Envoy proxy, telemetry, for the Jaeger and distributed tracing, um, Prometheus for the individual monitoring that feeds into Grafana. So let me just show you, it's kind of good to do a little bit of a review. So if I say get pods in the Istio system namespace, you can see we got all these uh, particular pods running. Um, and so this is actually Istio itself running in the context of its own namespace. So now, having said that, if I go back to Kiali and select the, in the graphing tab right here, if I select the Istio system as a namespace that I want to graph or see the graphing for, um, if you look, let's see what we got here. We can do a refresh on this. If you look here, you're going to see you're you are actually going to see some of the uh, Istio virtual services running right there. 
just kind of a, a way that lets you know that Kiali, without going into too much detail, will actually merge or show you graphing details across uh, your namespaces here. If I just wanted to see, basically, there we go. I could turn off the Istio system, and then I could see, you know, everything that's inside of the default namespace. So let me go ahead and, and apply the traffic animation right here. We've got our circuit breakers. I haven't really talked much about that. Um, but anyways, let me prime up also our Jaeger. So Jaeger is going to be using port 3002. Actually, that's Grafana. I am so wrong. Like I said, I, I make these up off the top of my head. So I apologize um, that I'm not 100% accurate, um, you know, the first time or maybe even the second or third or fourth time here. Uh, I'm just a developer, nothing more. Uh, just trying to learn new things and trying to become better and better and better. So now I've got Jaeger going and I've got Grafana going right here. Just kind of a good segue. And, I, and again, I am definitely sidetracking, but it's all good in the grand scheme of things here. So having said that, what I want to do is I want to apply this particular set of virtual services. Um, but lo and behold, I actually have um, some virtual services that are running that I can actually use Kiali here to delete, delete them. So let me just kind of show you what we've got going on here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say, show me the graph for the last six hours. If you notice right here, we've got, um, I'm showing the graph for the last six hours right here. If you notice these particular symbols on the web MVC, which is our front end and our catalog, this little legend right here, this little purple thing is what is known as a virtual service. And a virtual service, long and short of it, is a way to do load balancing within Istio. Uh, it's according to the course that I took on it, the, the one that I recommended, uh, the author there had, had mentioned that there, there's some verbiage about virtual services that are a little bit confusing here and there, but long and short of it is you can do load balancing with it. And you can set up certain weights. Uh, you can do your canary deployments and stuff like that. So to get rid of this particular error that I'm getting right here, this is just basically saying when I start up the cluster before I actually had a virtual server set up um, and I installed it in a way outside the context of uh, this YAML file. So I tried to apply another one and it's just saying, hey, that exists. You can't really update it there. So what I want to do, I just want to show you, you can click on this catalog service and this has uh, got that drop down basically that's going to show these brands here which is what I wanted to demo the uh, the canary on. So let me just go ahead and delete the existing virtual service through the console. So you can actually right mouse click on this and you can say show details. And if you look up here in the upper right, you can you can see where you can update your weighted routing. So here's one way to do the canary deployments, which is really nice. So remember how I had mentioned we have two versions of the catalog service. One is going to fill the drop down with the items, the other version, when it is called, is going to have that same dropdown filled with the item followed by dash new, which is just an indicator that this is being invoked instead of that. Well, you can, you can do your weighted routing through the Kiali interface, uh, as well as you can suspend your traffic. I'm just gonna delete all of the traffic routing here, but before I do that, notice how we've got these existing virtual services right here and destination rules. So I just wanted you to see that they're set to one and one. And we've got our two workloads for this given service, which is our catalog service. Our two workloads are basically our pods or our deployments, which are hosting our pods. So the deployments can contain replica sets too. 
but that's that's a Kubernetes thing. But having said that, I'm going to delete all traffic routing. When I do that, you should see that these virtual service counts now go back to zero. What I can do in this point right now is I can reapply my canary. So what we've got, I'm just going to bring that up history. And this time it's been able to apply that. Now if I go back to Kiali, and you should see these turning back to one if I refresh, and they are this time. So now, if you look at the output right here, this basically is saying that we have uh, a virtual service, our catalog virtual service, and when traffic comes to it, it is going to route it, load balance, if you will, uh, through Canaries. Um, it's gonna load balance 50% of it to the catalog version one, deployment and the other 50% to the catalog version 2 deployment. So anyways, let me just kind of show you what that looks like inside of the code. So here's our canary, here's our canary deployment right there. And so I'm not really doing a great job explaining these virtual services. This is not really a tutorial but rather more of a demo and just kind of um, fire hosing this to you so that if you do more research into it, hopefully you've heard the concept. Uh, you've got the virtual service, which basically is, you know, the incoming quote unquote uh, Kubernetes service, only this time it's actually fronted by the Istio virtual service, which behind the scenes is gonna redirect 50% of the incoming requests to this host, which is catalog, okay, and the other and subset of V1, and then the other 50% to the catalog host again, which is subset of V2. So if you look down, so these that's our virtual service. If you look down at our destination rules, I know I'm kind of scrolling right here. So you got your virtual service, which is gonna redirect its traffic down to the destination rule. If you look here at these names, these subsets right here, we've got our labels and our versions of V1 and V2, and here's your host, which is the catalog. And so you may be asking yourself, well, what is V1 and V2? What is that map to? Well, that's the catalog service. And if I, if I scroll down here, if you look where my cursor is to the catalog deployment, if you notice my catalog deployment, deployment uh, configuration file has two deployments inside of here um, to the catalog pod pods. There's two of them actually. So here's the first one on line two. And if I scroll down, this starts, you know, these three dashes starts yet another section. And I've got another deployment right here. And this is called catalog V2. It's still the catalog service, which is, you know, going to be our host. Uh, this is what's really important right here for the first one which is the catalog pod itself we have labeled it with version one for the second one which is catalog v2 we have labeled it with version two so anytime traffic goes to the catalog v2 it's going to return data with dash new at the end of it Anytime traffic goes to catalog, it's going to return that data without the dash new in it. And what I, what I mean by that, it's this drop down right here in the brand. As you can see here, this has got dash new. So in this particular case, it's actually went out and reached out to catalog V2. Um, the front end here didn't really say V2. It went through, the request went from the front end over to if we take a look here to this catalog service, which is our virtual service. And this is the one that determined behind the scenes, which of the versions of the catalog, uh, you know, that it's going to pod that it's actually gonna make the request to. And so that's how we do our, our canary deployments and our load balancing. So, Anyways, I know that was kind of a, a mouthful, so I'm gonna actually log into the application. 
And actually, you know, I really don't need to log in to run this demo because all I have to do is keep refreshing. Um, out of the box, it, you know, we have a weight of 50%. So if you look here, I just refreshed it. Now you see Adidas without the dash news. So here, in this case, it's actually reached out to V1. So if I show the details, you know, anytime a request goes to that catalog service, it's either going to forward that request over to the catalog pod or the catalog V2 pod based on weighted rules. And these weighted rules are inside of here with this destination rule thing. Okay, so you can see our two different subsets. Another nice feature is you can view your YAML. And based on this YAML, if you look inside of here, you can, you can literally take the YAML that's generated from Kiali and use that as a part of your own configuration when you're creating your destination rules as well as your virtual services. So getting back to here again, let me just show you how you can change the uh, Canary deployment weight through Kiali itself. So if we do that, I click on this right here and I say show details. I go actions, I can say update weighted routing. As you can see, 50% of the time it goes here, the other 50% of the time it goes here. So now what happens if I change this to say, in a real you know, deployment scenario, you'd want to de deploy this version two in production, like initially start out at 10%, for example, or maybe even 5%. But if I set it at 10% right here, and then I can say update. So now what we actually have is we've got you know weighted rules right here where 90% of the time it's going to go to the one service you know the original service as opposed to um, the secondary one so if we let me just refresh here this may not be a, a good example right here I'm just going to keep refreshing and showing you um, as you can see right now 90% of the time, you're going to see it going to Adidas, Puma, and Schlesinger without the dash new. You know, and if I refresh it right there, it, it goes to the same one again. In order to make this quick, quicker or to run a, a better test, I'm actually going to do a curl command on this. So here's what I'm going to do to actually debug this a little bit more is... Um, I just did a view source on the page itself to look for the drop down right here. So we got Adidas, Puma, and Schlesinger. And what I want to do is use curl and a loop. And if you can see right here, I'm hitting it and we've got the value of Schlesinger. So I'm going to do a while. I'm just going to say while true, do. Well, that didn't work out the way I wanted it to do. Uh, so I want to just say, well, true, do, and then we're going to actually say curl, and then we're going to say uh, echo, probably uh, return, and a sleep of point, yeah, shall we say like point three, uh, five seconds or whatever, and then we'll just say done. See if that works. Well, true, do, curl, sleep, uh, I've done. Probably just better. You're actually seeing me do some work here, actual work right here. So I just want to say run curl, just hack something together real quick. Well, true, it's just easier when I do it do it this way. So we're gonna say curl. And then we actually wanna sleep. You're getting to see me make these mistakes in all my glory. And 
and we'll just do bin data sage. Be like the bash, I think that should do it right there. Run curl. All right, actually, you know, I just want to fix this to get rid of this new line. I don't need that. All right, so as you can see, I got this running inside of a loop here. Um, if you noticed, it's almost like every 10% of the time you're going to see the Slazinger new show up right here. It's not going to be always completely accurate, um, but the load balancer does a fairly good job um, to trying to readjust itself such that, you know, the 90-10 rule applies here. But again, like I said, it's not going to be completely perfect. So what happens if I go up here and change the rules ever so slightly more? So as you can see, we've got some more new ones. So what if I actually weight it the other way around? So I'm going to go ahead and apply, just go back to the graphing and click on this MVC right here, show details for that service, update the weighted routing. Now what I'm going to do, what happens if I just basically say, go the other way around? Let's just say we're fairly confident over time. Now we want to, over time, we've kind of incremented this. Now we want to do like 90%. Now, if I update it there, I've just went ahead and updated it to 90% calling the new, the other 10% calling it the old. And if you look here, it looks like it's actually applying those rules. And then when we're fairly confident that everything is working just fine, we can create rollouts up to new versions or what have you. But again, this is something you get with this deal. So let me just show you, we can also do it through the YAML, which is probably the best way to do it, um, because you could actually write a scheduled job or whatever, which would apply this YAML um, incrementally after checking, shall we say, um, metrics and monitoring data via Prometheus. You know, you can run different types of metrics and say, hey, with this new version, it looks like it's running just fine. We're not seeing any more errors or anything like that. So bump up the new version percentage to 20% this, this day and then 30% the next day or whatever. Uh, but we can also do it through the YAML. So right here, let's see, we've got our weighted routing. Let's just say we want to do 75% and we can say 25%. So 75% of the new, 25% of the old right there. Uh, let's uh, you know, let us go back and make this change, and I'm just going to see if we get the particular error again when we try to apply this. Okay, let's see what we get. We're looking at this real time. Again, I'm using Minikube, and my system is kind of taxed a little bit, so it does take a little time to apply this into the Istio cluster. Okay, so we are getting that particular error where we cannot, you know, update it. If we've updated it through Kiali, we can't update it through the AML. It has to be one or the other. Uh, so what I need to do is delete the traffic for this given service. Okay, uh, that's just kind of a security feature. Now, as you can see, I've deleted the traffic. And by default, when you delete the traffic, it does like 50%. So let me just go back up here and reapply this again because I deleted those services. So now this time I've actually applied it, you know, through the command line to just using through the cube API. So now we've got 75% using the new version, 25% using the old version. And again, if you look here, you can see it looks like it's using the new version pretty much like trying to do it 75% of the time. And if we go back to the graph right here and we do a refresh, 
As you can see, it looks like it updated it. Now it looks like it actually did update it to 75%. So I just kind of wanted to show you that right there, um, just in a nutshell, that you know what canary deployments are about and how you can use Istio for its canary deployments. So another thing I wanted you to see also is um, I also have the uh, canary going on the front end too, which is this website. If you look here, uh, I purposely deployed two different containers, two different versions of the web MVC one. This is V2, it's just a real simple change to the text, but it's just demonstrating that it's bringing up one version right here. And if I uh, refresh it, you can see this time it's like not showing it, it's, it's minus, so this is version one. If I refresh it again, it's V2. So by default, this is showing like a 50% weighted routing. And we can go ahead and change that as well too, uh, using the same rules that we apply here. So if we take a look at our, our rules gateway right here, uh, let me just show you what I, what I mean by this. I know this is kind of a long drawn out section here, but I did want to mention this too. So if we go to the graphing, and we were to show, let's just say, the last uh, 30 minutes. And we can take a look at our, our service graph right here. You can see we've got our web MVC service right here, which basically is either sending traffic to this container or this container. And it is, it is doing it right now currently it's doing it like 50% of the time just because of the way that we have the waiting set up here. So let me just kind of bring this into view. We've got our virtual services right here. Um, I wanted you to see when I click on that, you can see it's redirecting 50% of the traffic to the original and the other 50% to V2, very much in the same way that we were doing the first uh, one for the catalog service. So if we take a look in the regular default namespace, you can see we got two different catalog services, one that's just catalog and the other has got the V2. We also have the same for the front end, which um, we've got our V2 right here and this one right here as well. So I can go ahead and change the waiting rules on that too. So let me just go ahead and do that. Let's see if I apply and I say I want literally, let's just say 80% of the traffic to go to version two and the other 20% to go to version one. That would be in our virtual service right here. And this applies just like it did with the catalog service where you have the subset, you know, so this is the virtual service right here where you set up your rules and then this subsetting here where you're actually doing your direction that actually links into the destination rule. So let's go ahead and rerun this. Let me make sure that we can bring that up. Okay, so we just went ahead and changed those rules right there. And so this time now, 80% of it should go to version two. And what that just basically means is I'm refreshing right now. You can see if you look down here, okay, there we go. And in this case, it, it shows version one again. Um, but for the most part, I'm hitting, I'm hitting the uh, refresh right here. Behind the scenes, it is really attempting to do a load balancing of 80% of the time to version two. So I hope this somewhat helps, just kind of giving you a quick demonstration here and there of what Istio provides to you. One of the things that I, I have not really mentioned is you can do um, circuit breaking which is you know, uh, another really nice, cool concept. 
Uh, for this particular example, this web application, circuit breaking really doesn't apply as well. Um, but if you take the original course that I recommended, he's actually got real-time monitoring data that's, that's being sent back from these different quote-unquote worker nodes that's publishing data back to the fleet tracker. And the amount of data there is, is quite a bit. So for that, you may need circuit breakers. And that's another pattern with containers. You've got service uh, circuit breaker patterns and you got your bulkhead pattern. So you can actually check for fault tolerance there. And with circuit breakers, what it attempts to do is it attempts to fail fast. If you have a, uh, a service that um, is, you know, having problems because a database connection is down or it's making another remote call somewhere else and that remote call is failing network timeout and all that kind of stuff uh, it takes time to time out and that could be a problem if you have all these other microservices hitting that they're all going to be queued up as well waiting and it becomes a, a massive cascading effect so with the circuit breaker pattern you know you may want to look into that circuit breakers just basically keep track of in a certain time period how often your service is failing and if you get you know if you reach a certain threshold of you know uh, five errors in a uh, 20 second time frame to a particular service the circuit breaker if you set it up that way can kick in and say wait for the next 10 seconds i'm just going to or 10 minutes i'm just going to return you an error right away and I'm not even going to bother to go out and make that call and it'll just basically give the other endpoint a chance to try to recoup or recover and the advantage to that is all your other microservices that are calling it are going to get error codes immediately and they're not going to be queuing up or causing a massive backlog uh, and the circuit breaker automatically will kick in and just basically say like after 10 minutes, it'll attempt to try to make another real call to it. And if it succeeds, it'll gradually go ahead and increase that to 100% of the time. But if it continues to fail, it'll just kick in and return your error codes again. So check into those kinds of patterns. Uh, Istio actually provides that to you out of the box. Uh, as a matter of fact, without getting into too, too much detail, because I don't want to give away too, too much. If you take that course that I recommended you uh, by Richard Chesterwood, he's actually has uh, circuit breaking where, you know, and that's actually, you can go to Istio IO in the docs, but um, he actually demonstrates how you can enforce uh, circuit breakers by using policies and things of that nature. Uh, policies is another thing I kind of breezed over, but in the uh, networking aspect with policies, policies just basically says who can call this particular service. So it's kind of like AWS where you can set up your own policy definitions and such where only certain people within a particular uh, group of, um, shall we say, permissions can make these calls and that calls. So if you run across policies inside of Istio, that's what you kind of want to think of. Uh, also in that course, he goes over uh, TLS, and with TLS, basically, you can set up um, a policy right there. You can actually have your traffic behind the scenes through the Istio service mesh being, shall we say, uh, passed along encrypted. And a lot of people, again, I've said that in the previous year, a lot of people may say, why would you want to do that since all of this is fronted behind a firewall and such? Well, it's true and it's not true by the same token because these particular, you know, Kubernetes itself is multi-node Istio, is, you know, the service mesh. It's communicating via these Envoy proxies from node to node. And when data goes out over these nodes, uh, you don't want to have other processes or whatever sniffing that data so you kind of want to enforce TLS you know so basically always turn it on and he has an example and it's really fairly simple on how to turn that up you know and turn that on and you can actually turn on TLS encryption where you're using certificates to communicate through the services you can turn it on and configure it fairly easy with with minimal amount of work 
So I hope this helped. Um, I know it really wasn't a tutorial, but it's something worth learning and seeing if you can use a, a service mesh into your, you know, for your microservices based applications that are deployed into your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so thanks for watching and I hope you have a great one and I'm sorry about, uh, you know, the amateur nature of this particular recording. Again, I'm just winging it, making it up off the top of my head based on what I've learned and and started these things up and gone through the, the process of, um, you know, uh, applying Istio to another application. A great way to learn this is to take that Chesterwood course and go through his examples, use his programs and all that where he uses the Istio service mesh, and then maybe apply it to your own set of applications. That's where you're really going to do a lot of the learning. So that's why I went ahead and took the uh, Frank Oz set of microservices from his course and converted them. You know, I already went through the process of putting them to the Kubernetes cluster. So here I thought I would go ahead and add Istio on top of that. And, and so that pretty much forced me to go through these Istio configuration files and set it up to work with that application as well as the header propagation, uh, having to make the source code changes to make sure your headers are propagated so that you can use Jaeger for your distributed tracing. So it's worth a spin and I really appreciate you taking the time and I hope you did learn something and you have a great one. Thanks a lot, bye-bye.